just on the subject of numbers, what sort of season are we in for? Have you heard? It's patchy. Um, some moors are reporting uh, some very good uh, counts. Obviously now uh, the counting flat out and getting the butts ready for the 12th. Um, some moors exceptional uh, and equally some that are, um, you know, have, have suffered again. Uh, Heather beetle is a big problem. Is it? That's, that's the, the really big one. So when, when you're looking at those great patches of heather and they're, they're basically black and twig-like, that's, that's heather beetle. It's that red, dusty, rusty yeah. sort of appearance that you get. Uh, and it's a beetle which uh, the larva ring barks, the, the, the stem of the, of the heather plant, um, which basically uh, kills it. And um, you can't spray it. You can't, it's just too big an issue and it's, it'll cause you more ecological damage to spray. Um, you, can't, you can burn through with limited success, um, but you've got all the problems of gaining consents out of the normal burning um, plan. And you can't do, and you need to do great swathes of it. If you've got it badly, you just need to do, basically need to get rid of the whole lot, don't you? Yeah, and, and it is cyclic as well. You know, your numbers will build up. Uh, and I think the only thing, the only natural predator for the heather beetle is... Uh, a little tiny wasp, and I think anybody that's walked around the game fair the last couple of days, I'm not sure we need any more wasps. <laughs> it's um, for wasps. Um, but uh, yeah, a, a, a good burn through will do some good, uh, or a really, really hard um, winter where we get uh, some penetrating frost deep into the peat, uh, and again, that'll kill quite a few of them. Okay, right, that's the w w we look forward to that. So we're going for a... a I mean, when you say exceptional days, I mean, you know, possibly even record-breaking days, but just looking at the kind of the, the, the more, the, kind of the, the, the lower end of the moors, the, 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 the worst hit moors, uh, I mean, are they going to be unshootable? No, no, no. I don't think any moors ever going to be unshootable in that you still need to harvest a, a proportion of those grouse. Um, even if you are on what we would call your spring stock levels, um, there is still scope to go out and walked up day, for example, or a a mini-driven situation, um, so some of those moors will still uh, take on uh, maybe maybe one, two days. Um, conversely, uh, we just did the Let's Learn More project where we had all the kids on the moor that, that was a month ago, yes. and we on one of the venues we went to, they're putting on 70 days. Sef seven zero days? 70 days of oh, well driven grouse shooting, which... Is, is that more uh, kind of east of the Pennines? Uh, uh, yeah, is it that far, easy it? far north east. Far northeast. Yeah. And have you heard anything from Scotland? Do you know how they're getting on? Yeah, Colin Shedden from Scotland, he's reporting similar, um, but again, uh, patchy. Some good, some bad. I know it sounds incredibly bland no, no, to say you, that. You sound like a weather forecaster hasn't made up the, your mind where there's <laughs> a hurricane coming. Um, but it's, that's just the way, that's the way it is. The counts are coming in and it is, it is, it's mixed reports. And we have, uh, you know, after uh, we got... Um, Oh, what's the medicated grits? After we got medicated, we thought that's it. You know, the grouse problem is solved. Never again will we get uh, any of the, the illnesses or the, the bugs, any of the stuff that stops uh, the grouse from thriving. But we have had some quite bad years recently, haven't we? Yeah, if you, it, not this spring, but if you go back to last spring, um, we had the beast from the east, um, a horrible cold wind which came in mid-March, which flattened the heather, which should have been gaining in nutrients and, and starting to really thrive. And the, 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 uh, the, the, the wind basically flattened the heather. The hen grouse, who are gaining top condition, uh, ovulating and producing their own body weight in eggs, couldn't do that. So we either had very small egg clutches or we had infertile clutches. Um, and even in the relay, where the grouse may have tried for a second, clutch, the first one having failed, uh, the hen birds were still unfit um, and, and weak and it produced some very poor broods and, and we're still suffering from the knock-on of that now. Are we still? I mean, I, th I thought they kind of regenerated very quickly, that, you know, give it a, give it a year and they're, they're pretty mm. well back to number, but uh, that's not the case. So, so again, patchy, it's mixed. Some okay, places right, yeah, but can recover quickly, um, others, others not so. Okay. But 70 days on, on one more is extraordinary, isn't it? Now, let's talk about promotion, because uh, y the, the project you've just mentioned, uh, Nimo has been doing very well. There's suddenly, there's, I mean, Gift of Grouse in Scotland, there's, a, there's this whole series mm. of, of organisations showing off not just the conservation benefits of grouse shooting, but the social benefits, the community benefits as well, isn't there? 
I think there was a sea change. There was almost a revolution sort of three, four years ago. And a lot of the Moreland, the small Moreland groups sprang up in some degree of frustration. Um, and at head keeper level, you started to get much more PR media savvy individuals forming collaborative efforts with uh, neighbouring uh, estates and moors and the promotion of the driven grouse shooting especially um, became pretty impressive really and I think the situation that we're in now is, is pretty good in that the message that the moors themselves can put out um, is, is, is good stuff. So if you look at NIMO for example which is a group set up in North Yorkshire um, you have a group of uh, keepers um, who are doing some excellent PR. It's North Yorkshire something Moreland organisation. North Yorkshire Moreland Management uh, Organisation, or something yeah. similar to that, yeah. yeah. Okay, and they, and they are they're bringing kids onto moors, they're, they're, I mean, they're doing uh, any number of community projects as, as well as promote, and uh, crucially for us in the kind of putting the message out there area, the Field Sports Channel news area, is they're producing media which we can use to characterise what, what it's like in the uplands. Exactly. Five years ago, the feeling, or certainly from my perception, was that if you had a cracking moor doing some amazing stuff, why would you want to promote it? Why attract any potential negativity? And I think what happened with uh, Avery's challenge and obviously the parliamentary debate is that people started to wake up. You know, we, we cannot allow ourselves to go backwards. So... Um, this is, the a, this, sorry, this is a Westminster Hall debate two years ago, yeah, which we, yeah. we resoundingly won in government, yeah. but whether or not we won in the media is still a bit... So, so if you look at our Let's Learn More project, which we've just delivered uh, about three, four weeks ago, we had 1,400 primary school children and their teachers, which is just as important, up onto the moors with a collaborative venture. So they spent a day, 50 schools, seven different venues over a week, with 30 different partner organisations and looking at, it's an educational day for the kids and they're looking at everybody that has an impact on that more. So not necessarily about shooting or gamekeeping, it was all about the farming, the ecology, uh, mountain rescue, the, you know, the, the police, there was all sorts of different agencies that have an, an impact on that more um, and the kids loved it and the objective was to send them away with a a great day out away from iPads and screens, um, but also a mild headache in that it isn't quite as straightforward as they see. And a lot of these kids would just drive through the moor every day on the way to school and not really have any sort of an opinion because out the car window, it's much of a muchness. It is. I mean, again, you produce media which we could use. So however happy the kids were, I mean the wider audience got to see another version of, of the more. I do have to say, let's learn more is one of the worst puns I've ever heard. Let's learn more. I mean, did you come up with that, Duncan? No, I blame the lad that works for me, Gareth Doherty, <laughs> who's done an amazing job. Um, you know, we've got let's learn marsh. That's another one in the, uh, okay. in, 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 in coming down the pipe. Um, did you try let's learn bog, but you said, you know, no, let's learn bog, was it? The, 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 yeah. Um, but, we can only do, you know, we, we can only do so much. Gareth has done an incredible job promoting Let's Learn More. Um, and next year, it will roll out, hopefully, into Scotland, Northern Ireland, and a couple of the Welsh moors. I think it's Ruwaben, and, and I can't remember the name of the other one. Um, but it, it's, it's going to boom, you know. It is. And, and we've got, we gain legacy funding through Basque, um, and also some incredible funding through some of the moor owners, who uh, have seen that this this is the way forward? Get get the education out there, um, get the message out that uh, we're actually quite nice people. One of the examples was we had 50 kids stood um, with two uh, grouse keepers, and they were calling in um, a cock and a hen grouse with a lot of youngsters. And how many kids would ever ever see that? You know that no, it, it, so it, that, that bit of footage that film which you took and sent us. That was that within was within 100 meters. There was a golden plover nest. Um, there were curlews there, you know, there, was, there was a buzzard circling overhead. I think they'd seen a, uh, a merlin as well. You know, this is priceless. Abs and it also, it puts the message out quite clearly that some of the people that are opposing us, quite high profile, it completely 
killed some of the propaganda that they've uh, well, been they trying to put out. They only have two messages. We're killing all the raptors and we're saying, uh, no, we're not. Look, mm. they're breeding better on our moors than they are on, on your moors. And uh, we are deplore, you know, we are saying we do not, uh, we, do, we deplore the, the killing of raptors. We do, we do not accept the killing of raptors. So, you know, we, we kind of knock that argument out. I think the trouble is the message is, is the tough bit. That's the bit where you know, we're unable to get that across. Um, they do have a, a slightly abstruse point to make about a uh, blanket bog, which I don't think even they understand, but uh, they, they only usually go to that as a kind of last resort. But and, I, and I can take them to a place where um, Shapmore um, yeah, and Curtis Cumbria. Mossop, who's just come from Newton Rig to us as our pathways well, we, officer we, we, we ended up there shooting together, didn't we? Yeah, that, yeah, that yeah, so day, yeah. So Curtis um, has got some incredible video of a cool, rapid burn going straight through some rank heather with frost, snow underneath the heather, untouched. Wow. And within that very spring, the sphagnum and moss coming through, bilberry, you know, uh, which straight away that spring have come through, no damage to the peat, nothing. No. Um, and great regeneration to the moor. Could you do a, a hen harrier day for kids? Get them up onto the moor to, f to look at hen harriers, to, to make the point that, you know, hen harriers thrive on. I mean, you know, it's a sort of, from a media point of view, it's a slightly put up job. Not that you have any trouble, I suspect, finding a hen harriers, you know, well, certainly not as much trouble as the RSPB do. But just because it would get the idea out there that hen harriers are thriving on grass moss, which I think is one of our problems. It's a cracking idea. Um, so, four nests at Swinton this spring uh, that have just, just fledged now. Uh, there's at least four or five nests in Boland. There's always a couple up at Kielder, Northumberland. Just that I'm just taking the, the, the England there. 600 not odd nests in Scotland, 24 nests on the Isle of Man. A uh, nest in the Peak District as well this time. Hen Harry a day for kids, it'd be ace. I mean, the risk is if that nest deserted, having oh, had I a lot know, of kids, I you know, know I can just imagine the, it's the, the PR. Graph. No, don't, but the RSPB has already pulled out of all those projects because it feels a bit. Uh, but why wouldn't we, it? you know, wha with, with the consent of the landowner, why don't we put a camera on? Yeah. and have a live feed, and, and if any estate wants to do that, I'm sure I can get consent from Natural England to I, put I a camera on the nest. I think we need to take ownership of the Hen Harrier. I think that's, that's going to be our thing. Right, Duncan, you are director of the northern region of Basque. You must have the most amazing shooting invitations lined up for this grouse season. Is that true? No, it's not. Oh, come um, on. What's the point of your job if you don't no, get good uh, shooting? And, and, the, and, and the crux of it is, it's, it's wrong. The, the, the invitations do come in. Um, and what I tend to do is convert them into auction lots. Okay. So we'll sell them for our fundraiser, for our young shots, our conservation projects. Um, I still get to go on the day, but I'm very conscious about shooting. Uh, I would rather go on the day, load, chaperone for somebody else. All grouse shots are by very nature greedy. I mean, you've got, you've got, you're too good <laughs> for your own good. That's the trouble. And we also, we have a day that we take, if counts permitting, uh, at Shap via Newton Rig and the Lowther Estate. Uh, and what we do, instead of having 10 guns there on the day, and we did an article in, or a piece, Matt Cross did an excellent piece in Shooting Times, um, where uh, we invite, so somebody who's never shot grouse before, but they are a competent shot, what we'll do, we'll put three people in the butt with a chaperone, and they experience the whole day, but each one of them will shoot one drive. Oh, that's now, wonderful. Now, if he or she shoots a brace, Ace. Ace. If okay. they if they don't, well, at least they've had the chance. But they share the bill, so it brings the price down. Um, they still have a cracking day. Um, Shapmore still benefits from the economic value of the day, and we might just have exposed somebody else to a uh, a new quarry species or something. You don't want to get more people interested. In the price will go up. You don't. No. <laughs> stop <laughs> doing it. Stop making it popular, Duncan. It's yeah. A huge mistake. Uh, ladies challenge. and gentlemen, I, I, I gonna, we're going to have to leave it there. Duncan Thomas, uh, thank the you. Northern Regional Director of Bass, thank you very much indeed. Thank you.